Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the force required to make a physics-based projectile move from one position to another position. I'm also going to be showing you how to use the target's velocity to predict their future position. To get started, I've created a base plate project and I've created two parts, one called from and one called to, and these parts are anchored and have set can collide, can query, and can touch set to false. I've then created another part and this part is not anchored and this part has a trowel inside of it to give it a cool effect. And I'm going to put this projectile part into server storage. What I'm going to do now is create a script that clones the projectile and places the clone at the position of the from part, the green part. And then we're going to apply a force onto the projectile to make it move from the green part and hit the red part. So I've created a script inside of server script service and all I've done is got the position of the from part and saved it into a variable called position one. And I've got the position of the two part and saved it as a variable called position two. What I'm going to do now is create a endless loop that loops once every five seconds. So I'm going to say while true do task dot wait five. Now I'm going to clone the projectile. So I'm going to say local clone equals game.serverStorage.projectile clone. Now I'm going to position the clone at position one. So clone.position equals position one. And now I'm going to parent the clone to the workspace. And if we play the game, we can now see that the projectile gets cloned and is positioned at the from part every five seconds. So now let's calculate the force required to push this clone part from position one to position two. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is get a direction vector that points from position one to position two. And to do this, what I'm going to do is say, local direction equals position two, negative position one. And now I'm going to create a new variable, which is going to be called false. And for now, I'm simply going to set it to the direction vector. So false equals direction. And now, I'm going to set the clone's velocity to equal the force. So I'm going to say clone.assembly linear velocity equals force. And if we play the game, we can see that the projectile is being forced towards the red part, but is not able to hit the red part. Now, before we fix the force so that it hits the red part, there's one small change I like to make, and that is instead of setting the linear velocity directly, I personally like to use the apply impulse function. So to change this line to use apply impulse instead, what I'm going to do is say clone, apply impulse, and I'm going to pass the force into this function. Now apply impulse takes the clone's mass into consideration. So we have to multiply the force by the clone's mass. And now I can delete this line here. And if we play the game again, we can now see that apply impulse is working the exact same way as before. So now let's try to understand this false variable a little more. So currently we're setting the clone's velocity to the exact same value as the direction. 
And if we read the description of assembly linear velocity, we can see that it says that it's the rate of change in position in studs per second. So by setting the velocity of the clone part to the direction, which is the difference between position two and position one, it means it should take exactly one second for the rate of change of the position to get from position one to position two. But currently we have the problem of gravity. So gravity is pushing the part downwards, preventing it from hitting the red part. If we select the workspace and look at the property gravity, we can see that it's set to a value of 196.2. So what that means is, if we spawn a projectile at the green part and it has a velocity on the Y axis of zero and we move it in the direction, by the time the projectile gets to the red part, which is one second, the velocity on the Y axis should be negative one, nine, six point two. But if I set the velocity on the Y axis to be 50% of the gravity, which is nine, eight point one, what's going to happen is the projectile is going to move up. And once it gets to 50% of the distance between the green and the red part, the velocity is going to equal zero. And then the gravity is going to continue to pull the velocity downwards and the ball is going to start falling, hit the red part. And when it hits the red part, the velocity is going to be negative nine, eight point one. So now let's add half of the gravity to the force. So to do this, I'm going to say direction plus vector3.new and on the y axis, I'm going to add half of the gravity. It's also possible instead of doing divide by two to do multiply by 0.5, which gives the exact same result. And if we now test the game, we should now see that the projectile starts at the green, goes up, hits zero velocity at the center, and then curves down and hits the red part. And even if I move the parts further away from one another, so I'm going to move this all the way over here and move this one all the way over here. So we should see that the projectile still hits the red part and if we timed it, it should still take exactly one second for the projectile to go from the first position to the second position. So this formula will always result in the projectile from reaching its destination in one second. But let's say we wanted it to take two seconds to get to its destination. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new variable called duration and I'm going to set it to a value of two. And now I'm going to divide the direction by the duration. So direction divided by duration. And this is going to make it take two seconds to reach its destination. And because it's going to take two seconds, we're now going to need to double the amount of gravity we add on the Y axis so what I'm going to do is say gravity times duration times 0.5. And now it should take two seconds for the projectile to reach the red part. And because it takes a lot longer now, it also affects the curve of the projectile. And if I change the duration to 0.5, so now it should take half a second for the projectile to hit the red part. And now with the duration set to 0.5, we can see that the projectile hits the red part a lot quicker and no longer goes as high as it did before. And if we wanted to, we could use the direction's magnitude, which is the distance between position one and two, 
to dynamically set the duration. So instead of having a fixed time of 0 0.5 seconds, what we could do is say 0 0.01 plus direction.magnitude times 0 0.01. So you'll have a minimum duration of 0 0.01 and as the magnitude increases, the duration will also increase. The reason I have this 0 0.01 at the start is because we're dividing by the duration. And if the direction dot magnitude is equal to zero, which means the from and to part are at the exact same position, and we don't have this 0 0.01, then they will produce a error because we're attempting to divide by zero. Now, I personally like to use the math log function to calculate the duration. And if we plot the log function on a graph, we can see that at a value of zero, the result is a value of negative infinity and it quickly increases. And once we get to the value of one, then the result is zero. And then the result quickly increases and starts to level off and increases at a slower rate as x gets larger. So if we imagine that x is the magnitude, this magnitude here, and the result is the duration. So the first problem we have is we have a duration of negative values when the distance is less than one. So what I'm going to do is do one plus x and now it's going to start at zero but remember we have the problem of dividing by zero so what I'm going to do is say 1.001 and now it starts at the value of 0 0.001 so now we can see that the duration will quickly increase and as the magnitude gets larger and larger the duration will level off and increase at a slower rate. So now let's use the log function to calculate the duration. So I'm going to delete this code here and I'm going to say math.log and if you remember we use the value of 1.001 .001, and we're going to add the magnitude and I'm also going to divide the magnitude by 0 0.01 so that this value does not increase too quickly. What I'm going to do now is instead of only calculating the false once at the very top, I'm going to move all this code into the loop. So every five seconds, we're going to recalculate the positions, the direction and the duration and the false every five seconds. And I'm also going to print the duration. So I'm going to copy this and print duration. So we can see that the log function has calculated a duration of 0 0.3 seconds. And if I select this button here called current client, it should show me the game in the servers perspective. And I can select the red part and select the move tool. And I should be able to move this part and because we're calculating the position and false every five seconds, the false should update correctly. And the duration is increasing because the distance has increased. And I can keep increasing the distance. And we can see that the log function produces a nice curve for hitting the target. So I've made a few changes to the project. First thing I've done is added set network owner to nil. So what this is going to do is force the cloned projectile to be owned by the server so that the projectile does not go into and out of the ownership of the player so it doesn't stutter. I've also reduced the wait time to, from five down to two, so the ball should spawn every two seconds. I've also unanchored the two part, 
you'll see it's no longer anchored. And inside of the two part, I've added an attachment and a line position. And I've set the position to be the same as the position of the part. And I've set the mode to one attachment mode. And I've set the max velocity to 15. I've then created a script and first I'm getting the part and the align position stored in these variables. And then I'm setting the parts network owner to nil. So it's owned by the server. I'm then looping and waiting 15 seconds, then positioning the align position to 200 and then waiting another 15 seconds and then setting the align position back to 20. So the part should go back and forth, back and forth. So if we test the game, we can see that the projectile is able to hit the red part when it's not moving. But once the part starts moving, now the projectile always misses the red part. So what I'm going to do is after we have calculated the duration, I'm going to update position two to incorporate the red part's velocity. So to do this, I'm going to say position two equals, and I'm going to use the red part's position plus the red part's velocity times the duration. And once we've updated position two, I'm now going to update direction to use the new position two. So I'm going to say direction equals position two, negative position one, which is the exact same as how we did it up here. And now we can see that the projectile hits the red part when it's standing still. And when it starts moving, we're still hitting the projectile. Thank you for watching my video and if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below.